I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at uh, the pretty village of Toller Porcorum. It's about 10 miles to the northwest of Dorchester in Dorset and we're going to be doing a roughly four mile circular route to the south of the village. We'll be seeing a couple of churches, uh, a disused railway line but predominantly some quite uh, stunning landscape scenery. Now I'm filming in the middle of November. The sun looks like it's going to make an appearance. It is a, a little bit chilly and there's a bit of a wind <laughs> around and I think there will be when we get high up on the ridge but it should be perfect conditions for walking so do come along with us. Well I've parked my car just by the church in School Lane which is just off the High Street. Speaking of the church, it's just behind me here. It's the Church of St Peter and St Andrew and the chancel and nave was built around about 1300 and the West Tower added in the late 14th century, although I have seen some sources say it's also from 1300. The chancel was rebuilt in the late 14th century and restored in 1891 when the south aisle was added. Let's have a little peep inside. Well, in we go. Once again I haven't been able to find the, the light switch so we're going to have to rely on the, the sunlight coming through the window so it's fairly fairly light in here. So just a quick look around here, get out of the shadow. Rather impressive um, font and I was reading that it's in two parts. So you've got the upper section apparently is 15th century but the lower section could have Roman origins. And then uh, just looking across there in the corner there's a, a bell which um, was a, a school bell used between 1875 and 1980 when the village school was closed. Just looking up there, I don't know whether you can see it's quite dark. That's the bell tower. I think there are there are six bells. And then just slowly panning around. So hopefully it's going to be light enough for you to to see in here. We're coming towards the altar with an impressive um, stained glass window there. And just looking to the side of the altar up here um, just at the bottom of the the chancel arches there's a carved head either side of a man and a woman so this I think is the the man I don't know if you can just about see it uh, possibly a local lord and lady of the manor who paid for the rebuilding work and just up on the, that south uh, window there is a, a very rare stained glass uh, window that's a sundial and I was reading that there's only something like 40 of those in, uh, in the UK and just panning round I need to find the north window I'm presuming it's this one um, and this has a tragedy linked to it it was originally the east window and it was being reset in the north wall by a chap called Thomas Legg and as he was rebuilding the window to its new position, he set his ladder in a wheelbarrow to, to reach a stone above the arch. The ladder slipped and poor old leg fell to his death. Well, certainly the church looks quite uh, stunning in the glorious sunshine this morning. Okay, we're gonna wander through the village, but before we do, something I want to look at down here and it's not just the telephone box that does have a phone in it. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> isn't that lovely? You've got some flowers in there. All right, yes. Now, what I want to look at is just down this track here. Ah, yes, here we go. I'm basically looking for the remains of uh, an old railway station. There was a uh, Oh, an old branch line here that ran from Bridport in the south to Maiden Newton. 
It opened in 1857, but the station wasn't actually built here until 1862. It survived the beaching cuts because the, the roads to the village uh, here were too small for buses. And it was uh, still operating until 1975. It wasn't uh, particularly big, uh, just a single platform with a modest wooden building. And the building was moved to Totnes where um, it's now used as South Devon Railway's uh, Little Hempstead Station. It's a, a heritage railway, but you can still see the old platform. Look at these metal railings. And oh, I guess that must be the original uh, gate post. I'm conscious the sun's very low this time of year. But yes, look, there's the platform that goes into someone's um, private garden but this little bit here that I'm standing on is actually um, uh, a, a, a public footpath. There we go. Let's have a little wander and see what we can see down here. So this is on the public footpath. Ah, just in front of me this is oh, quite a a substantial bridge. Um, the road that goes over the top is the road that we'll be going on shortly. But, uh, looks to be brick and, and metal. So obviously the track went through on that side and then on the other side here, have a quick look, come up onto the bank without tripping over. <laughs> there we are, made it up onto the, the middle bit so the track would have gone down on that side and then on this side uh, you've got a little taller brook and that joins the, the River Hook on uh, the other side of the village. The River Hook used to be called uh, the River Toller up until around the 15th century. Now Toller Porcorum gets its name from, uh, well the Porcorum bit is uh, Latin for of the pigs and the Toller bit is obviously named after the, the river Toller. I think um, uh, Toller is Saxon for a uh, river from gravelly spring, something like that. Although some historians suggest uh, it might have come from the name of uh, one of the daughters of Ethelred the Unready. Anyway, we're gonna head back onto our original route uh, and the road that takes us over the bridge. And here we are on the bridge. It's just looking down to where we were just a little bit earlier on and then uh, a quick peep on the other side and that, the old track used to carry on in that direction all the way to, to Bridport and there's the stream down there. Okay so we're going to carry on along this little road I think it's called the High Street that takes us through the village before we get out into the countryside. Oh, some lovely houses down here. This is uh, the old schoolhouse. I think that was the original school that was here between 1772 and 1785 and then it moved to a building in School Lane near the church. I hope I've got that right. But uh, we'll just carry along this delightful little road. Well this is a, an important part of the walk if you're going to be following this after watching the, the video, which I know a few folk do. We've made our way through the village and you need to look out for a signpost to Toller Fratrum and uh, we will be going down this little path here. But um, seeing as we're here, let's have a look over this um, gate here. Look at some of the ah, quite gorgeous views. So this is looking over to the, to the east and now that farm in the very far distance that's where we're going to be heading to. Now a little bit of housekeeping about this walk. Um, two things really. Firstly I'd uh, certainly recommend a, a very good pair of walking boots uh, and secondly probably uh, not a good idea to, to wear shorts as we're just about to find out. So at the bottom or just a few yards away from that uh, signpost I turn the camera and I appreciate the sun is very low. You'll come to this gate, it's normally closed, 
um, you don't go through that. Instead, just look to the side. Although there's no footpath sign, it, um, it does go down here. Now, it's one of those footpaths, as you go down, you might be thinking, is this really a footpath? <laughs> And you'll be cursing me, I expect, if you come and do this walk. But it's not too bad. And there is quite a, a firm bottom here, sort of um, uh, quite, quite gravelly. But uh, you can see what I mean. You wouldn't want to have shorts on the odd bramble either side. But, uh, I, and also I think on this walk, it, it's a walk that not many people do. So the natural footpath is... Um, not well maintained, put it that way. But fortunately, uh, this section isn't too long. <laughs> well, we made it through that jungle. It wasn't too bad. So we've just crossed a, a little stream that's uh, just behind me here. Just to show you, presumably it just uh, flows off the hills and eventually joins up with the, the river hook. Uh, a little chilly today, I won't ask uh, Logan to uh, test it out for dog dip uh, suitability. Okay, so the rest of this section is uphill, but we're going to get to see some open country now. Catch my breath, pit stop, <laughs> nearly at Ferndown Farm. But from here, so I thought I'd have a look at the view behind me because uh, they are now beginning to uh, look very impressive the higher up we get. So that's uh, Toller Porcorum down in the valley there. And this is your, your typical rolling uh, Dorset landscape. Of course, this time of year, the, the, with the sun being a little bit lower, you get some really nice shadows, which brings out the contours. We well, made my way past the, the farm, continued along the track, and I've come to a four-way sort of crossroads of tracks. Don't worry, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll put up a really good detailed description of walk in the, in the notes below. Uh, that way um, you'll have no problems, I promise. Because the thing about this walk, I find with a lot of footpath signs, usually they're quite um, obvious. You know, they will point this way to such and such. On this particular route, it seems that a lot of the signs are vaguely pointing as if they could speak. They'd be saying, well, it's sort of that way, sort of. <laughs> and this is a prime example. So I've come up. I say that's the track. Can you see that? That's the track I've come up. Um, come through this little gate here. And the sign, if I just show you, just points roughly in that direction. But there's not an obvious footpath. So if you didn't have a map, you might struggle. But um, as I say, it's not a well-worn route, this trail. But if we head up and hopefully over the top of this brow, we'll see another uh, little gate in the distance. If we don't, we've gone the wrong way. Ah, <laughs> phew, <laughs> we found the gate. And there's another one down there as well. We can breathe again. I'll tell you what, it's really starting to get some terrific views now. And this, uh, bit of woodland behind me here is uh, Winford Wood. Uh, we're not actually going to go in it, we're going to circumnavigate uh, around it. But apparently uh, some of the banks and ditches in there are actual scheduled monuments. But uh, really is quite magnificent. 
I say I don't know too much about the history of the woods themselves but we're going to continue just along this track here then we're going to go down into that valley then up and then round uh, the southern side of the wood. times you really are reminded how strong nature can be. Just at the bottom of this valley behind me you can see well presumably there's a some sort of stream that comes off of uh, the hills and then look at this where it's worn away, eroded away and become uh, quite a quite a gully. Right well we've come down there and <laughs> <laughs> I think this is our last uphill bit to the top there with the, the woods on our left. Come on Logan, pull me up. Well, we've made our way along the side of the, the woods and come to this uh, this pair of finger posts here. You want to ignore the sign that uh, goes to Toller Porcorum. Instead, we're carrying on to uh, Toller Fratrum. Incidentally, where we are here is part of the, the Jubilee Way, which is a, an 88 mile long distance path that starts at Bockley Dyke on the uh, Hampshire Dorset border and then winds its way through all of Dorset uh, to uh, Ford Abbey on the Somerset border. I think it was created in 1995 by the Dorset area ramblers to celebrate uh, 60 years of their existence. In fact, Logan and I have passed the starting point of the Jubilee Trail uh, when we did our Pentridge walk. Anyway, we're going to continue along this uh, top of the ridge here. And there's a very impressive uh, row of beech trees uh, in front of us. And actually, if I pan over, we get some terrific views down. There's uh, Toller Porcorum in the far distance, bathed in autumnal sunshine. Isn't that a quite exhilarating view? We well, made our way off the ridge and just about to enter the little hamlet of Toller Fratrum. Now our route is going to go left um, uh, westwards back to uh, Toller Porcorum but before we do, just going to do a tiny little detour to the right something special I want to show you. So what you want to do is look out for this lovely thatched cottage here and then just to the left of it uh, walk up what appears to be a little farm track but we are in for a delight. Well just before I show you this just to explain the uh, naming of Toller Fratrum. Fratrum is Latin for brothers and it refers to a um, medieval ownership of the manor by uh, the Knights Hospitaller of St John of Jerusalem in the 12th century. They were basically uh, an early 12th century uh, Catholic military order. Um, interesting history, I'll let you look it up. But uh, it's often known as Little Toller. Now, just look at this. Isn't that enchanting. It's a little chapel dedicated to St Basil, a uh, fourth century cleric and patron saint of hospitals. And at uh, the dissolution of monasteries, uh, Toller Fratrum was owned by 
uh, John Samways and he built a manor house here um, where the main house of the Knights was. It's, uh, it's now called Lower Toller Farm. But uh, isn't this quite delightful? As you can see it's uh, 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 just a single building. It was actually rebuilt in the 19th century um, but uh, basically just a nave and chancel all in one. There may well have been a larger church here in me medieval times and as you can see there's a stone bell coat on the west gable with one bell. Let's go and have a look inside. Oh wow, look at this. Quite, quite exquisite. Hopefully there's enough light coming through the windows for you to see all this. Now there are a few things to, to look out for. There's a, this magnificent font here just on the, on the right um, with some extraordinary sculptures on it and uh, just making my way down to the altar at the far end there's a, a, a sort of sculpture attached to the wall and it dates to the 12th century it's uh, Mary Magdalene washing the feet of Christ okay we're going to leave Toller Fratrum now and make our way back on the homeward leg to Toller Porcorum I'm just following this track and look at this structure here. Um, looks like a, could it be an aqueduct of some sort providing water off the hills on the left hand side to the farm on the right hand side? I, I don't know. A little pit stop <laughs> to check out the view again. I hope this comes out on the camera but uh, just to show what I'm looking at so Right at the top there, that's those, uh, that row of beech trees that we uh, walk by along the ridge and then the field at the top that we crossed and down the valley into uh, Toller Fratrum. And then this is this track that we've been following back. But there's still quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot of greenery about and obviously the trees this time of year, the leaves now that beautiful golden yellowy brown colour. I tell you, this homeward leg part of the walk has been terrific. Some of the views that uh, we've enjoyed have been quite gorgeous. And just see behind me, over my shoulder, the uh, the outline of the church of Tollepur Quorum. So we're nearly there. We just got to find the railway line, and then we know we will definitely be close to the car. And there's the footpath we've just come off, and back on the. What used to be the old railway line, nice dead straight, a lovely avenue there with the uh, those autumnal colours and the sunshine poking through. So just gradually pan round and this is our last bit and we'll come off the line here and then back into the village. Now this building here on my right uh, used to be a pub, uh, the old Swan pub. Originally it was a thatch building that got burnt down in 1903 and then was rebuilt. It was closed by the brewery in 1998 and was never reopened and it's now a, a residential property but lovely to see it's uh, still got the old uh, painting on the side of the, the building there at the top. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here in front of the church or chapel of St Basil's. I love it. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a, a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and uh, do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. It has been a glorious day today. Real autumnal, the sun's been out, lovely and fresh. A joy to be alive, that's for sure. We're, uh, well, there isn't a pub anymore in Toller Porcorum, so it looks like it's the Chalk and Cheese pub at Maiden Newton. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.